Thanks to EA Game Changers for letting me play with this pack a little early. You know, I think it sucks to start a review that way because people think it was free, so I would be biased. But remember, my opinion is worth around $27, and I may not agree this pack is worth $40. So let's look at what it has to offer. Mountain excursions, skiing, lots of vending machines, and Japanese culture. We'll look at all of it. When I first started up this pack, something caught my eye. I realized something about this one. Create your sanctuary. It's basically telling you that you can build. <laughs> That's something you can always do. But to be clear, this pack does offer some nice new objects for people who do enjoy building. Honestly, looking at this feature list, it's mostly about the mountain. This mountain, whether you're skiing on it or taking a hike, it all comes down to the new location and taking advantage of it. Mount Komarebi has three neighborhoods and about 14 lots built by these people. Guess what? They're a lot better than typical starter homes in Sims 4, and you can tell they really tried to make them fit in. They are a touch on the expensive side for a starter, but I was pretty happy with what I saw in the build quality. You have what you need to live. They actually have toilets, you know? <laughs> With most stuff tied to the location, like outdoor retreat or jungle adventure, you won't be able to do many new things in your other worlds. A base game patch just made it so that you can vacation in any world so long as it has rental lots, and of course you can just pop into the mountain lots from anywhere. Much like Nancy Landgrab and Judith Ward, you can just appear in Japan at any time. I don't mind the fact that you can just appear here, but it's far, far past time for those sims to stop appearing and ruining the atmosphere of new worlds. I feel like I'm being stalked, and to me the new worlds mean that there should be more new sims. Not purely random townies and not Bob freaking pancakes. This pack fulfilled a few community wishes, just not in the way I'd prefer. You see, you're now able to swim in all the water bodies in Mount Kumarebi, but you still can't do this in any of the other worlds. I don't honestly know why I care, because swimming is not all that interesting. It just feels like an odd thing to leave out, though I think they said they might let you do this in other worlds someday. Given its Japanese theme, the pack adds hot pots and katatsu tables. It's kind of a relaxing setting I might enjoy, and they have represented Japanese cuisine all over the place, with probably over a dozen new dishes. The only thing is, it's pretty simple to add food, and I think that's just expected. Since food doesn't really do much, it's not really a new feature. I've always felt that way. Another thing from Japanese culture, or just from people who have nice carpet and want to keep it that way, Sims can take off their shoes when they enter a house. You use this little sign from build mode to control this. Sims do this to change their shoes. I don't mind the lack of an animation in this area because I think it would have taken a lot of work for very little payoff. So I understand why it's this way. In the neighborhoods, I didn't find many places to explore, though there is a little garden if you send a sim up this rock climbing wall. I also ran into forest spirits, which are a bit creepy, and so far all I think they do is give you a few different types of moods if you make a wish or capture one, which makes them angry. These really are big neighborhoods, though. In many areas, you can't use the find a toilet button because sims can't find one in an area that big. Each of these three neighborhoods has its own festival, a feature from city living. If you already have that pack, it's one less truly new thing to experience. There's a festival of light, festival of youth, and one for snow. Let me share with you my experience with the Festival of Light. Let's just say these are not major features. There, there's a mascot here I could take a picture with or do this with. Okay, it's really supposed to be this, I guess. Sims dancing and doing a hip bump, not levitating. At the vending machine, you can buy a kimono and some food. You can also collect the new simis from these vending machines, and some of them may only be attainable when you visit a festival. It's basically a Pokeball with these little square characters inside. Same model, different textures, it seems. I like the animation that plays whenever you open one, but they themselves don't seem that exciting. 
If something gets stuck in a vending machine, I suggest you leave it because you can overdo it and potentially get your sim crushed to death by a vending machine. So be careful. Later that night, the festival ends with some fireworks. All in all, there isn't really anything going on here, though I might be able to get rare collectibles by visiting it. To me, it's more like a screenshot opportunity. There are two other festivals and maybe they're better. You can use the boards to check when the festivals are scheduled. It's like every other week for two of them and one is weekly thing. A new type of lot is available with one provided for you in Mount Kumarebi. An onsen is like a bathhouse with a natural hot spring. Sims need to shower before they get in or they'll get dirty looks. This is one of the two new places Sims can woohoo along with the cave on the mountain. So there are two winter sports in this pack along with rock climbing, which we'll get to. This is mostly a watch your sim do something just for filling the fun need type of thing. You can start on the bunny or easy slope and watch your sim do some face plants. It's handy to use the right click on the sim portrait thing so you can follow them down the hill. It definitely gives you a nice view and you can rotate around. I think this is fairly cool and I enjoyed watching them get better, but it's simple and I will burn out on watching him go to the ski lift building to skip the lifts and teleport to the top. As you level, you unlock new skis and snowboards and can set your preferred skis in your inventory. These things mostly just exist in the inventory. You can't place them. As they level up, they'll learn some new tricks, but these are not skills you'll turn to in order to make money or develop your sim in some other way. You get a few abilities like the fact that you can teach ski lessons from Monday through Friday with high level skiing and earn several hundred. You can also blog about it and with snowboarding you can record videos of yourself and use them to make royalties. But these abilities unlock very late in the skill after you've already watched sims go down the slope dozens of times. Rock climbing is another new feature and leads into our next feature. This one lets you scale walls, of course. <laughs> this is not exactly new as we had rock climbing walls and fitness stuff. What you need are places you can't go without climbing and the pack does let you go up to a couple spots where you can find collectibles, but not many. One thing that bugged me and that I didn't understand, you buy the snowboards and skis at the vending machine, but you need to use a computer to buy your climbing gear. The weather conditions outside, like if it's a blizzard, will impact your climbing and you'll have weather up on the mountain whether you have seasons or not. So you have mountain weather just in this one area, the others are perpetually sunny. But being in a bad mood or having icy conditions can cause your sim to slip and fall potentially to their death on the taller walls. So you can climb a mountain in Snowy Escape. It's a new type of party you throw using the phone. This makes a group that you can take up the mountain. This is not some big adventure of survival like I had hoped. I had my sim on need static for testing and I turned it off. I expected to run into some trouble. For instance, you can get bitten by bugs like in Jungle Adventure. You can use insect repellent and bombs to make this less likely or get rid of negative moods caused by the insect bites. You find these in the vending machines and you can check the boards in town to see what type of insects you might run into. Pay attention to the weather as well. So I set off on my big adventure and I'll let you be the judge of this feature. First, you do have to bring another sim with you. You need to get to the goal and in order to finish, you'll require level six rock climbing. So don't bring a sim who has low climbing experience. If you don't have level six, you cannot climb the last wall. Along the way, I experienced little trouble. It takes just a wee bit of time to get through each stage. It's this area that's not on the map, mostly squiggly paths you take up to the mountain with a few walls. You need to get everyone to the marker to move on. You can climb carefully to increase your odds. I thought maybe I'd need to manage moods, use natural resources like berries you find, and you know, bring supplies and set up a tent to rest up for the next day. But if you send your sims in a good mood, not low on energy, you just 
walk and climb straight to the top in a very short time. Once you reach it, you'll get a medal. Most of the progress comes from advancing, but you need to do at least some of the date style objectives that appear in the top left if you want a gold. It's climbing a mountain. Surely I'm not wrong to have expected it to take a bit and to maybe have some minor hurdles that make it more satisfying to get to the top. I think Jungle Adventure had a bit more difficulty to those temple runs, but in this case, you really are just walking straight up to the top. Most of the work of it comes from getting level six rock climbing. I've already made this joke, but walking is a new feature here too. Hiking in groups. You can go in a group with other Sims and hike, walking and talking along the way. But this, like the festivals, is not truly new. Hiking is an outdoor retreat. There is something new here though. What is new is the ability to get your Sim into a mindful state if you use the mindful walk. So they meditate while walking and get into a mindful state and you can use that for a buff of any type. So you can surge emotions to make your Sim get a strong 12 hour buff. It may be something you like to start the day with a mindful walk for your Sim. What is more, this does work with some other things I think, like looking at a bonfire or painting. These count as slow experiences that can get your sim into a mindful state. So this is one thing you can possibly take from this pack and use elsewhere. I've just not investigated all the different activities that work with it yet. If you make a new sim, you'll find that you're able to select a couple new traits. Proper sims prefer to do a traditional Japanese greeting and don't like seeing other sims be improper. Doing things like failing to get a shower before getting into the onsen or being rude to other sims. The other new trait is adventurous and it's kind of neat. It seems to make sims crave new experiences like doing one of the mountain excursions, but they also like learning new skills and get bored doing the same thing. There are two aspirations as well, one that revolves around traveling like in Mount Kumrabi and another that is all about using the winter sports. For the Mount Kumrabi sightseer, it's just a grab bag of things you might do there. You guys know how this one goes if you watch the channel because I've seen you pissed off in my comments that these gold aspirations are basically tutorials. The extreme sports aspiration is a bit better with a few things that might take some time to work on. On the lifestyles, perhaps the single biggest thing that will be present in your games beyond Mount Kamarabi and the activities you can do there is the new lifestyle system. Back in January 2020, in the before times, there was this survey. In it, they asked about winter sports and personality improvements, including sentiments, which is new. So unfortunately, while they might do more improvements someday, this pack is that survey. It's the survey come to life. You get the winter sports, sentiments, and lifestyles as an improvement to personality in the game. Does it fill that need? Well, kind of. There are 16 of them. As your sim does things each day, they can get up to 20 points toward a lifestyle. So if you do something several days in a row, you'll end up unlocking that lifestyle. Lifestyles that are neglected will gradually decay. When I first started writing down the benefits, I was kind of impressed. There's a lot going on in just Adrenaline Seeker. But I started to see it has a lot of opposites. My only criticism of this is that there aren't many unique effects. It's just tense when doing thing or tense not doing thing. Want few friends, want many friends, and get moolets based on that. Some of them feature skill gains, but we have a lot of those already. There are unique social interactions, but many I'll need to look into to see if they do anything. You know how I feel about our social menus. I suggest you browse the list I made on my site, linked in the description, and see if the effects they have are something that will appeal to you. If you aren't into Mount Komorebi and aren't excited about it, this is the feature you need to look at gameplay-wise to decide if this is for you. Unless you're a builder, because those guys are probably really happy with this. It has a good bit of items. I'll be honest, I don't know what gameplay might be here, but it's a rabbit hole career, so the best you're likely to do is unlock a couple new abilities. We have a business career already, but this is supposed to represent the hardworking people in Japan who have to go in for really long hours. Thing is, 
This seems to cap out at around a 10-hour shift and falls more to normal career timings in the upper levels. I was hoping Sims might have it rough. So what are your thoughts on this pack? And if you made it this far, could you give me a like? My feeling is, if I were a new player, I'd be a bit more interested in this pack. If you only own a few, it gives you a pretty world. If you don't have city living, it gives you a few festivals to attend. No jungle adventure? Well, get that instead of worrying about these expeditions. It just feels like lifestyle system aside, this pack has less new things to do. You know, starting a game with a goal in mind. There are skills to jump into, but not some major thing that gives you goals when you first fire up a pack, like becoming a master spellcaster or running a retail store. I'm glad Maxis gave away sentiments, but given the extreme lack of personality in Sims 4, I don't like lifestyles as behind a paywall. Traits have needed work, and when we ask for personality improvements, we may have been cynical and expected to have to buy it. But there was a hope it might be some big patch that overhauls traits. This is one of the prettiest packs I've seen, and it has some things going for it. Just don't expect a lot of things you've never seen or done before if you own all the other packs. You can join the channel via channel memberships here on YouTube or support me on Patreon using the links in the description. I say this as I am hoping someday we'll get a Sims 5 announcement and I can cover all the news up to release. Thanks for watching.